Thank you so much for tuning into my show. William Wallace for America with me today in this interview is General Flynn. How you doing, William? How are you? Very Thank you good, so much for being good. on there. I really appreciate it. You know, you, you got a lot of titles, <laughs> and, you know, you, and you get called a lot of things. I'd yeah. like to ask you first, what is your favorite to be called? Oh, man, I, I've been called so many things. I, you know, I think just don't call me late for dinner, I guess. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it, it, I've been called every name in the book. I, you know, it's so many that probably I don't like any of them. I don't like any of the names that I get called. I don't really care about them anymore. But you've got lots of great titles. You're a retired general. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, you're, yeah, you're active. Yeah. You're, you're a patriot. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're an, you know, now, of course, I say you're American, you know, but, I mean, you spent all this time in the military. Well, I mean, I think that just in general, I mean, for for different audiences, the fact that I'm a grandfather, I mean. Uh, that's got to be your favorite yeah, title. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I spend time with my kids, my grandkids, that's really a lot of fun. I mean, you know, there's so many things that we could do in life, but that's one of the moments that I cherish. And so when they... Even the baby, like as a two-year-old who's just starting to learn, you know, how to, like, how to pronounce words, the fact that he pro pronounces my name, you know, he calls me Papa, that, like, will just melt you. Exactly so right. So that's kind of cool. So it, it, your, your grandchildren and your yep. children, is that part of the reason for your passion for our country? Or yeah, I mean, or, I, what, yeah, what, what, yeah, what other yeah. propels you? Well, I mean, you? I mean uh, you know, I don't know what your background is, but, um, you know, my background and my upbringing, uh, there's a lot of service in my family. So both my grandfathers, my, you know, I'm, a, I'm probably I'm a third generation. So we've been in the country for a while. Uh, and I have two grandpa, gra grandfathers who fought in World War I and World War II. I have a grand, my, my father fought in World War II and uh, Korea. Uh, I have an older brother who was the Vietnam era. And then myself and my other brother, uh, Charlie, who's still serving, We've been in every conflict since, frankly, since 1980. You know, so, so if you look at if you look at our family, not all of them, because I'm one of nine. Um, we have service in our blood, and so when I look at the country and I look at what we have committed ourselves to, you know, it is about my family. It is about my grandkids. It's about the future generations. About all, but it's about everybody's kid, everybody's grandkid, everybody's right. great grandchild. You know, if we don't if we don't uh, have a country, you know, then what do we have? Exactly. Right? And so I spent almost three and a half decades of my life, uh, you know, fighting for this country, and uh, and, I, and I know I know the sacrifices that many people have given, uh, you know, to include their lives, friends of mine, and in, uh, in service to this country. So, you know, we're we're here at a at a Mike Lindell event here in in Springfield, Missouri basically to reveal a plan to, to help our elections. And, you know, and it's a wonderful thing, and we have to keep fighting for these kinds of things. There's, there's, certain, right. there's certain elements in the United States of America that, are, that only exist in this country. No other country in the world, nor in the history of the world, have the elements that we have, and that's because we were given them by people that sacrificed everything, That's right. and they created this beautiful thing called the Constitution. So, so as we, you know, as we go forward, uh, and we, because all these people go, well, I wish it was, I wish it could be the way things were. I wish we could go back and do the the way things used to be. No, you know, no, this, we're not going backwards in time. We're going to go forwards in time. We're going to go forwards in time with all the new technologies, all the new ideas. All the new books that will be written, all the new movie, movies that will be made, all the new people, all the new people, that, you know, the new children that will be born and turn into leaders for this country. That's going forward. But we do it, we do it as a constitutional republic based on a set of rules and laws. And right now, we are at risk for all that, William. So, you know, we're, we're in a place right now, a gentleman earlier on stage here said, you know, these, these are not unprecedented times. We've been through the revolution. We've been through the Civil War. That's bullshit. We, we've been through those. Our I got Our military it. went over this there. This is totally thought, unprecedented. This is on our own ground. Right? I mean, even this when is we almost talk, like an attack on our even, own But soil. even when we talk about the revolution and the Civil War, those were here. But they were under different, vastly different circumstances. We are now in a, in a, in a political nightmare. And we have a communist takeover of our own country by people that are currently in charge. And they've stolen it. And people can argue with me all day long about, about you know, who, what, when, where, and why. And I can answer all those. And, and uh, 
and I have in many, many times, and that's the purpose of this, uh, of this event too, to remind people how, um, you know, how do we get to here? That's right. Right? And then what is it that we need to do to get out of here, to move forward? And I just think that people need to recognize that, um, you know, like your voice, you're an independent voice, you're an independent uh, podcaster, you're an independent, you know, media guy, right? Exactly. I mean, you're out there and you're doing all these different things, whether it's radio or whether it's podcast, whether it's TV. And I think all that matters. And what we've got to do is we've got to maintain, uh, make sure that we save those. We have to save those types of people that are willing to stand up and say, this is what I believe. In this country, you should be able to do that, right? If I say, I believe the 2020 election was stolen, and I believe that President Trump won the 2020 election, I'm going to get talk about names. Exactly. Right? You, you, you get called all kinds of titles. Well, and you get shut down, you get censored, you get all these things. Well, in this country, I can say that. I should be able to say that's called the freedom of speech. It's within the First Amendment. And, you know, but, but right now we have, we, are, we have threats to the very fundamental elements right. of our foundation, which is our ability to say what we want to say, you know, in, in, uh, in, in without, without harm. And, and to your point, you know, it, 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 people always talk about the Second Amendment protecting the First Amendment, yeah. but they're going after the First Amendment right now, yeah. not just by eliminating it and deplatforming people, they're actually using narratives to make people feel guilty yeah. for saying it. So when yeah. people feel guilty that they, that they can't say something or speak their well, mind, then they start to feel guilty for feeling or thinking that way. So you're actually, by taking away the First Amendment, you also change their heart and mind in such yeah. a way that you now become part of that establishment minded thinking that allows them to be able to control us and right. where our country goes. Right. You know, you bring up something that's a really good point. You know, the uh, so John F. Kennedy was physically assassinated. OK, and physically assassinated, it appears, by our own government, OK, by elements in our own government and uh, and anybody that you know, because there'll be people out there that'll go, well, he shouldn't say that, he, you know, he doesn't know that. Uh, go watch Oliver Stone's uh, latest movie on JFK. Uh, he did it in 2021. And you tell me what you want to believe about that. So anyway, and physical assassination used to be something that they could get away with because we didn't have the forensics capabilities that we now have. DNA wasn't even considered exactly. in murders back then, right? Today... If you try to assassinate somebody, there's just too much there's evidence. Cameras, there's, everybody's there's, there's, got a, yeah, everybody's got that a camera. camera yeah. Everybody, there's cameras everywhere. There'll yeah, be, exactly. you know, there would be somebody on the grassy knoll. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Today. Yeah, right. So what do they do instead of physically assassinate? They assassinate by narrative. Exactly. Okay? And that's what you were just, you know, getting at. This idea about assassinating by narrative to shut you up, to shut you down, to censor you, and to and to eliminate, not not limit. But to eliminate your free speech, your ability to speak freely. And that's what they're doing in all these hundred felony counts that they just gave to Donald Trump in four different federal courts or four different courts. I mean, this is insane. And they're basically telling him he can't say that he believes that the 2020 election was rigged. Exactly. That's, that's what some, that's, I mean. That's taking the so, First Amendment right. Right, right. So, so never mind the Second Amendment right. Now, the, now, when we go, when we look at our constitution and we look at the fabric of our constitution, most people, most people have no idea what it even looks like, right? You think constitution, okay? That's the constitution of the United States right there. It's not a lot. That's it. It takes, it takes about 45 minutes to read, you know, and, and grab a cup of coffee. The Declaration of Independence, which is also in here. The, all the amendments, which are also in here, okay? Our, our, especially the first 10 exactly, amendments. Right. It's all in here. It's all in here. I mean, you read the fir you read the Declaration of it's Independence. It's pretty simple. It's very simple, and, and it's a it's a beautiful document. It was written almost 250 years ago, and we don't follow it. We're not following it right now. And Our what's government amazing, is not what's following a, it. What's amazing? I, people always talk about saving America. Yeah. And I say, you know, America was saved by our Creator. Yeah. We as humans were saved by our Creator. We yeah. need to protect 
America, and God puts together the perfect people at the perfect time. Yeah. He put together our founding fathers to create this perfect document. Yeah. He put together people since then to do the right thing at the right time. And I say today, in today's time, there are perfect people here in our country yeah. that are trying to lead by example to help lead yeah. more people for and all of us many to of them are, many of them are in that convention room in there right now representing all 50 states and they're they're just regular old people they're just regular people exactly. regular Americans who have said enough is enough and I am now going to get involved and many of these people that are here have been involved for the last couple of years in in a big way I think we've had I mean half there's a thousand plus people inside of here you know about half of them never were involved in politics right. and are now and many of them are either have either run for office and are now in an elected office like school board or or a or a, re, a county recorder or a county commissioner county election commissioner I mean there is that that many people that are in here today that's just this group these people represent tens of millions of other Americans. And there's a lot of them in here too right. that that have experience, that aren't elected officials that experience election fraud in their right. own elections. Right. So right. now, now as you travel the country, as you have so yeah. so often, yeah. are you seeing more people being wakened up? Are you? I mean, when you first yeah, I mean, I think fight, that some of them needed a kick in the rear, and and uh, but more people are waking up and. And, uh, and there's a lot of people that are already involved doing stuff, and there's a lot of great ideas. I think that each place is going to be a little bit different, you know. And there's not going to be one uh, silver bullet answer for any of this. It, it's going to be everybody, you know, the, 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 um, in, in warfare, when you are going to war and you plan it, right, you plan all these different things for war, the best plan gives you the most options up to the last possible minute. And I think that what we need is we need everybody coming up with great ideas that are executable, that you can actually, that are viable, that can be executed, that can be accomplished. And, and don't count on one silver bullet. This particular event is going to demonstrate something that I think is, is, a, is miraculous. And it will have a, uh, a capability that is unlike anything else that's out there. And it'll be a good thing. But we also have to do, you know, we also have to clean up voter registration rolls. We also have to continue to get more volunteers. We got to continue to join these different efforts that are that are out there to basically clean up this system, right. get rid of some of these people that are in office. You know, it's not it's not, um, you know, we put them there, folks. Okay, remember we put these people in office, so they're not there like they're not a bunch of political bums. And we put them there. And the best part about it is the more people we get involved, yeah. the more people we get to join us in the fight, the more we wake up those people that we yeah. put in office to realize that. Yeah, I mean, you make sure that you got it, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. And all, all that's right. But we've got to find people who are leaders that we need in the, you know, leading the country in the, in the political environment that we have. These people that are long in the tooth politicians, we need to get rid of them. We put them there, though. That's right. So we put them there. Now, some people go, well, it's selecting. You know, these are selections now. They're not elections. Bullshit. We put them there. We put these people there. We put these people there for 50 years. 50 years we've been putting the same type of people right. back into, the, into our government, and we've created this incredible political class of bums. Many of them are bums. Many of them are, most of I them love are, how you say most that. Of them <laughs> are, most of them are crooks. Most of them are crooks. Right. Why, don't they, why don't they stand up for what we're... You know, the Republican National Committee ought to be running this event, not Mike Lindell. Why right. is Mike Lindell doing it, not and, the Republican? And why these, are the, these are the best people. These are the best people that the Republican National Committee will find. And they should be in here. The, 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 uh, the leader of the RNC ought to be in here speaking to these people. That's these a, are your grassroots leaders. That's a great point to, to point out that Republican leaders aren't here. Yeah. We don't see many national no. politicians here. No. It just, I guess it just goes to show you that not many people are really what really. No, because elections. they think that our elections are are fine, they, or they're chicken. It's interesting how many Republican minded they lack. People. No, they lack courage, William. They lack courage, and they and they can stand up there and they can come in and they can argue with me all day long. Come find me and tell me that you, you know, you believe that our elections are free and fair and wonderful and rosy. Come and tell me that. And I'll show you a ton of evidence that, sh that says otherwise. And they won't. They won't come find me because 
They know that I'm right. They know that Mike Lindell's right. They know that Donald Trump is right. They know that the, the thousand people that are in there that, are, that represent a hundred million people. And those guys in there yeah. are actually boots on the ground. They are. They are I, I, on my show. I've done 20 interviews today yeah, yeah. Of, of people who tell telling their, telling their people. grass people, telling yeah. their stories of yeah. what they're finding and the, what's going on in their counties, right. in their states. And these people not only and see the other it. And the other thing, I'll, I'll, you know, there are people in there that serve time in jail because of their because of their because they're they said something using the back to the first amendment they said something that their local law enforcement you know district attorney or even up to governors in some cases particularly in colorado didn't like what they did or didn't like what they said and they threw them in jail and these people are still standing fighting so i'm telling you that american people know american people have the best common sense in the world the american people understand our constitution you know, in, in general, and the American people are not going to give up on this country. We're not. We're not going to give up on it. We're, enough is enough. All, all of this stuff that's happened to, uh, to President Trump and all the people that are around him for years, because I went through it, but it's, you know, it's continuing to happen. Right. We're not going to put up with this any longer. People are engaged. They're awake. If, if anything, a guy like Donald Trump, his numbers are going to go up. His numbers are going to go up. And this is not a, I'm not a, you know, a Donald Trump, you know, giant fan I, I you know i know donald trump i know exactly. him i know him and i know him well and donald trump as we as i stand here today for the next four years he's the only guy that's already a proven president of the united states mm-hmm. proven what he sure. can do with all of the incredible pressure and he's also learned some lessons and one of them was guys like me you know, you got to yeah. be careful what these people tell you up front and he now knows that he knows that and so now he's his ability and his and his knowledge of being able to understand and and maneuver in the uh, you know in the in the sort of the ebb and flow of of the government. Right. There's no more of this, you know. People, oh, everybody's going to love you when you make president. No. 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 This is about now. This is about fixing this country, holding people accountable, moving this country forward, getting out of these endless wars, you know, and raising the economy back to where it was. Those are easy things to do. They're very with easy. strong leaders, and and. I don't see anybody, not one, not one in any of the landscape of the Republican, those that are re- campaigning, nor clearly not on the Democrat side. And that's why they can't see him because, because a guy like Bobby, a uh, Bobby Kennedy, he's demonstrating some skills, mm-hmm. but he's got a, he's got issues that are not going to, um, that are not going to help him win because the Democrats don't like, the Democrats want endless wars. The establishment he, he wants to shut like the wars him. down. The Democrats love the deep state. He doesn't like the deep state. So they're going to shut him down. And it'll be interesting to see as they go through the uh, the um, the Democrat Prim- primary, yeah. you know, do they steal the election from him and does what does he say about it? It'll be interesting. That's one that I'm going to watch very closely. That- I, I like I like him. I like what I hear in, in some respects. I don't, I don't agree with him on everything. But it's an, he's an interesting disruptive effect to the political landscape of the United States of America. And we need more people like that. And he's like a leader. And we he's we don't need big names like that. Yeah. We need little names like yeah. that, which is going back to your point in here where there's a lot of little yeah. names in here. Yeah, a lot of people and these in here. people in here. Yeah, these people are, in here, these people in here, they don't you know, they don't really care about the politics side. They, you know, you can you can get a sense of you know, if you gave him a if you gave him a set of they ten know. well, if you gave him a set of ten questions, you're gonna go, okay, you're you fit into the conservative box. Right. That's fine. But they're not Democrat or Libertarian or Republican or they're just Americans. They just want fair, they honest want, elections. They want fair, honest elections. That's what this whole thing about. And, my, and Mike Lindell will be the first one to say, hey, all I want is a fair election. That's all I want. I spent I spent almost three and a half decades of my life fighting for that right. That's right. And so, you know, that's all I want. I, I just want somebody to, you know, lift up the rug and go, okay, everything, exactly. everything under there is okay. Because right now, it, we, they, they fight us tooth and nail to keep the truth from the American people. And Why? Without, and without, because without fair, honest elections, yeah. they don't have to tell yeah. the truth. Yeah. General, so, any, any, any final words? No, just, you know, get out there and get involved. Stand up, step up, speak up. Get involved in your community. Find your voice, find yeah, your find, path. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank okay. you so much. I appreciate Thanks, it.